Hello and welcome to lecture M 6.22 databases and an introduction to the patient record. Um, the learning outcomes for this lecture are as follows to understand the basic structure and terminology of a simple electronic database, to understand the nature and limitations and advantages of paper based records and similarly electronic medical records. So essentially what we're looking at here is databases and how they're applied to patient information. Uh, what's going on in this lecture, there are other resources. Uh, firstly, there are three videos. First one is the one you're watching right now. And there are two short explanations of concept of electro electronic healthcare records. Um, and the one is two minutes long, the other six minutes long. Uh, students should watch those and just by explanation uh, the first one is a commercial presentation uh, I do not endorse this nor does uh, the college but it gives a very broad and uh, straightforward overview of why we should use electronic rec healthcare records and um, you should really stop right now and take a look at that video no matter what you may know already, you should go back and take a look at this. It is very straightforward. And then come back to this lecture. So to continue, um, the other video is from the Society of Vascular Surgeons in the United States. And they're uh, pitching or uh, informing their members on what they call the Electronic Medical Record, EMR. And you will notice straight away in this discipline that there are many different terminologies for the same thing. Essentially what we're looking at is um, digitized patient information on computers. Uh, and we'll get back to that terminology a little later. Importantly, this video is aimed at working surg surgeons, so the terminology is a little different to the previous video. Also in the lecture folder, there is a PDF. Here is a screen grab of that PDF. And specifically and importantly to all students, page 14, section one. Um, access in EHRs and sharing health information. Again, EHR, electronic healthcare record. It was EMR earlier, as I said. This is a um, definition that moves or a, a naming convention that moves but essentially it's the same thing students must read this chapter importantly in all of this is um, you the students the profile of the students if I were speaking to students in Dublin who would only ever work in the same hospital in Dublin this would be very straightforward in that we could uh, discuss the hospital information system that is being used in that hospital only but the reality of course is very different we have students from uh, all over the world who will practice in many many different locations but in that context patient data is universal and vital to good quality health care we don't know we can't practice but the application of electronic healthcare records is not uniform. And the use of computers, indeed, in uh, healthcare settings is not uniform. But in Ireland, and this is, I can speak with somewhat, uh, some, some authority, but not uh, absolute authority, uh, there's a difference in the private versus public hospitals. The uh, private hospitals tend to have uh, different systems to the public hospitals. Um, the, uh, indeed, in public hospitals, departments may have different systems. They may not talk to each other. They may not communicate. Uh, at the GP, general practitioner, family doctor level, uh, there are systems which have um, fairly good adoption in Ireland, but not everyone is using them. Um, the issue in Ireland is that we uh, get a lot of direction from the European Union on this, uh, but it is still not standardized, despite a huge amount of work. So what I would say to you um, now, again, you're, you're entering into healthcare settings, both as patients, maybe as supporting relatives or friends of people who are unwell, or indeed when you go to work. Take a look at what's going on from the information perspective. Um, how, are, how, are, how is the information being recorded? Um, 
uh, there are plenty of stories out there but iPads been integrated into hospital information systems but you know they, they're uh, if you like the a-list stories they're, they're uh, very well funded so take a look around you when you get into these situations if you have time and see how information is collected it is uh, all I can say is that the issues are the same what's required and why it's needed are the same universally but the system will be all different so uh, very quickly uh, just to form, form where we're coming from here with records because the history does actually inform um, what's currently the practice so this chap here Hippocrates who I'm sure you've all heard of uh, is the father of Western medicine and I make sure to stress that uh, certainly it is different in different cultures and different parts of the world but he is uh, generally seen to be the father of Western medicine uh, the medical record for him served two goals uh, to accu accurately reflect the course of the disease over time so what happened and when and to indicate the possible cause this may seem like absolute uh, simplicity itself but this is the first time it's been recorded that the uh, uh, medical record was structured in such a way um, Hippocrates interestingly also recorded what the family had seen and used it to form his diagnosis uh, and if you're standing outside the Royal College of Surgeons, uh, over the door is a carving of Hippocrates. Uh, and he, that'd be the right place to have him, over the door of a medical school. Uh, in the 19th century, uh, the range of equipment uh, quickly, uh, the Industrial Revolution uh, impacted upon equipment used in medicine. And while this looks like an elongated egg cup, it's actually a 19th century stethoscope. Uh, so people literally put their ear here, put it on the heart there uh, to listen to heartbeats. Uh, there are stories um, in uh, Victorian times and before in England. Uh, people were so scared of being buried alive. There were bells and uh, mechanisms in coffins to um, uh, alert people that people weren't dead. This was actually an enormous... Uh, problem uh, for uh, these people in that there was no actual way to tell how people had died imagine that uh, short of cutting them open which of course uh, relatives wouldn't have allowed so uh, we started to listen inside and look inside uh, the uh, human body and of course new terminologies and new uh, technologies uh, were applied as the uh, uh, inferred or developed new vocabularies so with new words and new descriptions which needed to be entered into the medical record so we progressed from the story of an illness to include a range of observations uh, and also a range of observations made by other members of the team and this indeed was a huge change in 19th century medicine where um, the uh, nursing staff contributed to uh, the medical record uh, in a more contemporary or more organized sense we have uh, this man William Mayo and immediately you may identify him with the Mayo Clinic which of course uh, his early practice in uh, New York eventually became the Mayo Clinic um, so his was the first group based practice in the United States and at the time all the physicians in the practice kept one single notebook uh, so Dr. Mayo had his one notebook uh, and he recorded, wrote down everything about the cases he saw. But the issue here was that uh, the, it was chronological and I may be on one page and the next person was on the page after that and so forth and so on. So it was a case that it, uh, although the information was written down, it wasn't in one place as such. There was pages dividing different episodes for different patients. And a full 29 years later, uh, after that practice of uh, keeping everything in one book, the Mayo Clinic separated the records uh, into individual uh, groups of notes for one patient. But uh, even then, there were no agreed criteria of what to record. These were just the physician's observations written in one place. Um, and again, it took another 11 years, 1920, where a minimal uh, data set was agreed. 
that is data taken for each person before during and after the consultation so uh, it uh, it allowed the practice to compare what was going on so that's quite 40 years if you think it was quite a long time and uh, those time frames were just it's almost inconceivable in our electronic age but as we'll see in uh, a little while uh, electronic records are proving quite difficult to implement so the modern medical uh, record as we see it is not only time orientated but it is source orientated in that we have laboratory information radiology and so forth and each of those has their own time orientation so we've got the source and time mixed so it's quite complex and layered so think about that in regards of a summary we had uh, Hippocrates think about when things had happened and observing generally what was going on um, the 19th century with uh, William Mayo we're looking at the progress of the disease uh, and putting them in one place um, and today we have source orientated with time being critical so let's take a look at paper based records uh, which uh, classically I suppose we'd all be familiar with um, busy healthcare providers uh, with sheaves of paper under their arms or the um, nurse or doctor approaching a bed and picking up a chart or um, a folder with information in it and reviewing the patient so uh, really what we're looking at a paper-based record holds all of the patient's history what's going on and if even we look at this um, uh, graphic here the they're stacked on a shelf they're very unorganized we'll get back to that in a minute but one of those holds all the information about one person um, and all that data is in one place so in order for me to gain some insight into say Eric Clark his record I need to uh, read and look through all the sections of that record and I can see from these records here this image that those different colored tabs I would imagine uh, indicate different types of tests or different parts of the record so there is some effort there to um, divide the information but it still needs to be synthesized summarized and synthesized in some way um, and to do that you need to read it and the uh, latest information can be difficult to find uh, uh, we need the lab results and then we need to look at radiology so you could be flipping back and forward through that information and indeed in many cases radiology films are not kept with the paper-based record um, so think about it like this what if you had no uh, no Moodle uh, we, we, we didn't have Moodle operating to support your learning here in the college so what would happen there would be giving you uh, printed notes which uh, is uh, a living memory of mine uh, students took those notes they organized them into folders they organized them different ways they uh, um, wrote on them they uh, copied them for their friends whatever it was they did they lost them um, they uh, they, be they became very precious they were very important to the students obviously uh, now with the advent of Moodle and uh, I am not saying it's the per most perfect system in the world but you know where all the notes are you know where to go get them um, so with your own set of paper notes if you were giving everything uh, given everything on paper before a lecture you'd organize the notes in a very structured way you'd have your own way of doing this and in similarly similarly with the patient records um, the information is collected you, know, you pick up notes at certain times but when the patient is admitted there's a piece of the information a subsequent visit then adds information lab results add information drug therapies information on that add information and that paper has to go in here at some stage or into your big folder full of notes as it were so uh, even that physical process of managing all that paper based information is a task in itself um, so if we try and look at what if you think about the world with Moodle and words without or paper records versus computer records uh, first and foremost paper information is static in that it can't really be tr transported around it can be obviously been carried somewhere but once it's in one location it has to be collected to be used elsewhere 
Uh, computer data uh, obviously can be used in multiple locations across a network and it's instant. I turn it on, there it is. Um, the issue with paper is that it has this fixed order and if we go back to that graphic again, as I said, those tabs uh, probably indicate laboratory uh, work, um, uh, clinician's observation, nursing notes, wherever it might be. So that we have this fixed order and that's either fixed by the designer, the person who put the folder together or the last person who read it. Uh, they may read something and put it back in the wrong order and that is uh, a fact of life. Um, you use anything that somebody else has uh, used before you, be it a library book, or that's why we have librarians, they put the books back on the right shelf, uh, but you, you can understand that, that uh, a previous user may have been in a hurry, get their information, stuff the piece of paper back into the notes and run to the next case, wherever it might be. Uh, so what we can do is we can compile the information in any manner on a computer and make statements like show me radiology only, show me radiology and drug therapies or any combination that can be reported. So we're not looking at that fixed order. So the as I've said, the problems with the paper, one place, one time. It's on the ward, it's in the nurses at the nurses station, it's in medical records, that's it. It only exists in one place at one time. If we get into a subspecialty in the case, it means more paper notes. The patient is receiving physiotherapy, if the patient is uh, on some kind of rehabilitation, more and more paper notes will be uh, added. And of course, the issue is, will they be added in the central place? Uh, one of the biggest, biggest issues, and this is um, something I think we could all agree with, even around the area of uh, typing, but we'll get back to that in a sec, um, handwriting. Um, you write free texts into um, notes. Uh, you can, in a paper-based record, they could be anywhere. They may not be dated, which is crucial when this observation was made. Uh, they could be illegible in that people just can't read your handwriting. And indeed, they could be incomplete. Uh, their patient person mightn't have finished the note. Uh, an analysis of handwritten free text is very, very difficult. And if uh, you were to be given now two pages of handwritten notes and asked to transcribe them, to type them into uh, Word or something like that, there would no doubt be errors. And with a paper record, if I were to uh, prescribe medication that has a contraindication or clashes with another type of medication, paper will not know that. So we can't program alarms or alerts into um, the paper record. If somebody was had an allergy to penicillin, um, their electronic healthcare record would know that as a rule. Uh, whereas paper, it must be written clearly and legibly somewhere in the record. And uh, you that, that, that can be missed. So, uh, believe it or not, we can list some advantages of paper. They're easy to carry around. You put them on your arm, you walk off with them, that's it. Uh, there's freedom of reporting, so you can write anything anywhere. Uh, you, you can take notes in the margin, you can draw arrows, you can uh, draw circles, underline, that kind of thing. It's very easy to pick up paper. We all know how to read, we can flip through it, we can get a quick understanding very quickly, uh, or uh, very easily. And there's no training, and this is a really crucial point. You, you need training on how to use a computer system. You don't need training how to uh, read, or very little training to understand what's going on. The notes are always on. They don't need power. There's no ser server downtime. And they're not open to computer hacking. And I'm going to revisit this uh, in a, a later lecture and later in this lecture, uh, because it's becoming increasingly important. So... A summary to summarize computer records uh, they don't need to be in one place uh, they can be anywhere as long as we can get at them we can easily retrieve them that's the main thing then of course we need the hardware and the network connection and all that kind of thing so we can use information where and when and in the format where it's required uh, we can have results on separate computers but they can be linked 
such as the lab pharmacy and uh, the codes about ICD data which I spoke about in an earlier lecture radiology they can all be joined up and it does not mimic paper and I think one of the greatest mistakes uh, made and it's made time and time again in lots of computer systems is that they're designed to replicate what's going on on paper and there isn't the thought put in on how systems can be de developed to give a better functionality than paper so uh, with that said I just want to talk about how information is recorded in a database and databases are very simple but very powerful tools and there are some basic rules around their simplicity so take a look at this as an example about the structure of information and this sounds like a contradiction in terms but simple information can be complex to be useful so we really have to look at a piece of information and break it down into its parts and here's my example this chap here Tim Berners-Lee the uh, a man credited with the invention of the internet pretty much or the World Wide Web rather not the internet so uh, browsing information on the internet is uh, this man's uh, invention so if you were to walk up to uh, Mr. Berners-Lee uh, I don't know him but I'll say if you he came to you in uh, your surgery and he'd fallen off his bicycle and broken his clavicle and you said hello what's your name he might say Tim and that's fair enough that is his name but let's look at his Wikipedia title here he is Sir Timothy John Tim likes to be known as Berners-Lee O-M-K-B-E-F-R-S-F-R-E-N-G-F-R-S-A so he is a knight of the British Empire hence he is Sir Tim but in actual fact his name is Timothy not Tim so it's a truncation but that's what he likes to be called apparently his middle name is John his surname is it Lee no it's Berners Lee and the hyphen is quite important so we need to be able to tell our database which parts of this information we can pick up and straight away if there's a hyphen there and the computer doesn't know how to handle a hyphen it may be dropped also does Tim John Lee Berners Lee have a son or was his father called senior is he called junior and what I'm trying to illustrate is here name is in some ways a complex uh, aggregation of information and we can call this a data element so uh, a title could be sir mr mrs miss infant um, and in other uh, parts of the world sir is important in the United Kingdom um, it may not be important elsewhere uh, there are other many other conventions but for courtesy for official records uh, for many different reasons this information needs to be recorded if uh, the man were a general in the army uh, would it be important to call him general uh, Tim Berners-Lee you, you get the idea also his name needs to be broken down into first middle and last so uh, Timothy John Berners-Lee and so we have a hyphen there which could cause confusion now why you might need the middle name is um, uh, maybe uh, it seems like a little bit of overkill and that we it's not important but if you take it in the Irish context we had Michael Murphy we're certainly going to have m more than one Michael Murphy uh, as a patient uh, Michael J Murphy that could be Michael John we'd ha probably have a lot of them too but indeed what we're trying to do is to give the person a unique identity mr. Michael J Murphy senior junior I don't you but you want to be absolutely sure that you have all the correct information indeed if we just had one field called name and we put it all in it wouldn't be very much use to us because we may we, 
wish to write a letter electronically that says dear mr murphy mr Berners-Lee." so we're joining these two data elements together to give us new information and uh, new information we can use in new ways and then if we think this down further there is so much information that can be broken into uh, elements uh, we have male that should be male my apologies male female um, and the uh, marital status uh, married single divorced DNA what does that mean did not answer and you're certainly going to be in the position where you have lots and lots of data fields to fill and the patient doesn't want to tell you any of it so the components of a database and we're, we're, we were talking about fields here but let's go back up to the top there are three things uh, that a database consists of files records and fields and we look at the file the, the database file itself uh, and within it there are records patient a patient b patient c patient d these are the records and the fields are the elements we break it down under and of course name could have many other fields associated to it age may have a range uh, gender male female address well that's going to be quite uh, a number of elements uh, right down to may, maybe zip code postal code or whatever the convention is where you are working locally so at the top level the file and this is the key diagram here the file itself we tend to think of files as being uh, what records are but they're not this is hold the data you enter and work with this is everything pretty much it it contains all the information about the fields their definition what type of data has been entered is it controlled data such as gender there can only be male or female uh, there can only be certain ranges of data in say uh, blood pressure or that kind of thing um, it also and uh, the file also contains information on access privilege which user can see what information on do or edit or whatever they need to do and also information on calculations layouts and scripts and calculations can be used to produce alerts how we see the information and if we say script run a report on uh, all the people who were here last week who had elevated blood pressure so that would be how the file operates if you like all the rules the regulations the organization the definitions are held in the file then the record is the information about a single activity individual or event so that we're getting down now into if you like the the entry the the bit we would work with and the important bit here is that the uh, information can be uh, excuse me the information can be sorted searched reported and exported and the reporting and exporting is critical for uh, running analysis uh, doing research seeing what's going on so uh, at the level we may wish to search for elevated blood pressure in men over 60 years of age um, who were admitted to accident and emergency and we should be able to find that information and then report and export it um, in the fields themselves and we're right down into the components of the record and this is uh, the example I gave of Mr. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee's uh, name we have the components of the record and they can be quite fine quite small and it would appear to be quite laborious uh, we would could have whole numbers such as age or beats per minute or visits per month so it's a number only or real numbers which uh, pH values blood pressure they're numbers but they're not in the classic sense as an integer or coded information which is structured input from an external source so lots of they're just numbers we haven't actually typed anything in yet and you know, there's already a range of different types of numbers and if these are correctly defined in the uh, actual database file itself uh, we can stop error uh, typing in somebody's ages 350 rather than 50 years of age that kind of thing heartbeat of 800 beats per minute where it should be 80 uh, the patient visited 33 times last month well I suppose that is possible but you get the idea um, 
uh, pH values which are way outside a range and the patient really couldn't be alive without them. Um, so, and of course codes, the things we can't change. Whereas that ties everything up nicely, indeed it's like putting uh, contacts into your phone, you can add pictures, it's really nice, it looks well, it's easy to search, all that kind of thing. Uh, indeed we can use our phones now to uh, ask p the phone to call people. Uh, and in some ways the speech recognition uh, is the uh, the bit that we can't fix yet in patient information although there are lots of applications very difficult to get uniform and this is the huge issue is natural language or free text comments this is the biggest single issue uh, you're writing you're taking a narrative you're uh, putting in what you think is happening you're giving your impression uh, the patient was restless the patient uh, was anxious and um, scared uh, the patient refused to um, answer any questions though so forth so on you can see that that would be very difficult to have tick boxes or numbers or structured input so a lot of the record is through the production and saving of natural language and or, or free text comments and its review and use um, so I just want to stop here because I've used a couple of terms and uh, I want to show you that these terms can be used interchangeably there's four of them I've picked up or five of them rather uh, and they're pretty much the same thing at this level that I'm talking about they're pretty much the same thing so uh, what I will attempt to do is uh, use electronic healthcare record but Again, as I said at the start of the presentation, this is about information on uh, computers about patients. The reason I highlight them in the research in that if you go to PubMed or um, any of the other uh, research databases and use these phrases, they're all used. So there is no standardization in the research in the literature. So if you're making a search or getting into this kind of thing, just be aware that there is definitely more than one uh, convention for their description. So if we do look at a hospital information system, I just want to move into that area now. Um, think of all the different places where information can be picked up. Uh, these would all these systems would have their all these departments would have their own databases. The actual database exists here and look there's a arrow to financial how much is this costing us case mix is in an irish context but it, it's something the government produces uh, we have the coding systems here which need to go into the patient information system so we can report and charge the government whatever it is we're doing and we have a clinical support system that tells us that we need to do something there is too much infection there uh, we need to review what's going on and these systems would plug into our activity database which is drawing information from all of these other information now this schematic here this diagram is not absolute but I think what I'm trying to get across is that the information is coming from many locations and is has many many uses but with a database in hospital it should be at the center of all administration but the really crucial part of it all is reliability you need to be able to use this all the time it's no good if it breaks down when we're providing care for a patient it's also no good if it's incomplete it needs to be full it needs to be complete it needs to have everything there uh, and it needs to be well structured it may be a lot of information but if it's not structured correctly we can't use it now this is quite a wordy slide quite a lot going on but there are important definitions here and I've taken them from the Health Information and Quality Authority or HICWA as we call it here in Ireland uh, and these are an important uh, body in Ireland providing regulation around the provision of health care and they have uh, some criteria about the electronic health care record now I, I 
this is an advice if you like but these are good definitions so the healthcare record elect ehr electronic healthcare record enables information about an individual to be brought together and therefore provides the opportunity for healthcare organizations to improve quality of care and patient safety improve quality of care and that is the primary goal uh, it's not a an exercise in data collection it's not something to write reports for the government it should be improving the quality of care and patient safety um, now here this second point is really crucial uh, and it's about ownership and we're getting into uh, security and privacy in a little bit but uh, again Hikwa state elect electronic version of a patient's medical record that is maintained by the healthcare provider over time now this is the important bit the information is maintained by the healthcare provider so as such they have the responsibility to look after the information legally uh, the information is in their care and then the information may include a whole range of uh, uh, data in comprehensive or summary form uh, demographics age race gen gender um, uh, medical history medication allergy you, you you get the idea so there may be enormous amounts of information but the important points are the most important point is that it improves the quality of healthcare and patient safety the second most important point it is maintained by the provider they need to look after it and this is just an indication of what should be there now i've used hikwa h-i-q-a.ie uh, irish website where you are in the world uh, there will be different advisories but in the context of this lecture this is what you need to know um, but be aware that it may be different slightly different where you live so other requirements and uh, while we're talking about it being safe and being maintained by the organization one there are a few other requirements which are important and it should be able to provide a signature function for the healthcare worker to electronically record approval of entry of orders now that's very uh, formal language but basically what it means if you change something that change is linked to your account that's the important bit you can't just change anything and there's no audit trial the record needs also to support pictures uh, graphical information and then to provide security confidentiality control features to prohibit healthcare workers from access data to access data on patients not in their care just because you have access to the hospital information system doesn't mean you can look at all the patients if they're not in your care you should not be looking at their notes so there there are considerable security uh, implications also we need to be able to order lab results and our lab uh, tests and cancel them from the hospital information system so this set here is very much uh, what HICWA would like to happen or you know uh, basic uh, definitions and as I say this is a very important part these two slides these two paragraphs um, and also this the signing you must be able to track who made the change now just looking into security I, I, I just found this slide I've taken a screen grab uh, looking at security issues in healthcare records and you're using uh, electronic healthcare record and personal healthcare record interchangeably so let's let's just uh, assume electronic but the top three challenges for the providers the insurers and the pharmaceutical industry and what might strike you is that uh, they're pretty much the same uh, one of the top three is the encryption and in storage and transit absolutely has to be encrypted can't get at the information uh, it starts to change maybe slightly at the bottom level in that uh, 
the providers of this let's say the hospital or so are looking at uh, the uh, we want to be able to keep the system uh, updated whereas insurers and we, we can't ignore them they're a huge part of the healthcare landscape um, they want alternative identifiers and information masking they're wondering uh, can we change or do we have to look at everything do we need to look at everything and of course the providers are wondering should we let the insurance company see everything about everybody and imagine if uh, healthcare insurers had access to everybody's full medical record that wouldn't be a great idea um, so you can see that it's pretty much the same things people are worried about but if we go back to what a patient record is used for notes for the clinician and others results that's what's in the record but primarily is to support the care um, but lots of other things going on it can be used for but primarily is to support what's going on to help the patient a bit like what Hikwa said but two slides ago three slides ago improving patient care and safety it's also don't forget a legal document it supports research and education and can be used by healthcare management to uh, order supplies for the hospital to keep the hospital stocked a certain way to anticipate needs to anticipate trends so we're coming towards the end of this um, electronic healthcare records uh, we could easily say there's been 30 or more years of hard work going on around this lots and lots and lots of work and the results have not been uniform uh, the initial focus of the uh, record was to collect data just to get the data somewhere get it parked get it available and that to some degree has worked but again not uniform not the same here in Dublin as it is in other countries and indeed it's not the same in Dublin in all hospitals so it's very one thing is for sure that this is a very very costly endeavor uh, this is not something that is solved with some money it's solved with huge amounts of money and as we'll see in a minute not always uh, effectively one of the most problematic areas is the recording of free speech or text or sorry free text handwriting and speech much more problematic and that's how we tend to communicate informally with each other we don't have a a questionnaire when we have a conversation we have a, a back and forth dialogue a discourse uh, and certainly in my own uh, uh, interests here and in keeping an eye on this subject although security and privacy has always been important it's uh, never been as high on the agenda as it has been recently so to conclude just some examples of that the guardian newspaper based in the uk uh, and here is an article from september of this year uh, so the look at the subtext here this is the national health service it system so this is the uh, government run uh, health system which everybody in england has a a right to access and they had uh, attempted to uh, construct a patient record system and the I suppose the words are in the first line here, an abandoned NHS national health system an abandoned national health system patient record system has so far cost the taxpayer 10 billion pounds sterling and the uh, journalist goes on to sell with the final bill for what would have been the world's largest civilian computer system likely to be several hundreds of millions of pounds higher so the biggest IT failure ever seen so they tried and they failed it is now over they're gonna to have to go and think about something this has been going on for years Now, at another perspective, we talked about structured data entry and capturing data within ranges. And here is uh, an article from Medscape from some time ago. But uh, 
it says the computer order entry systems can actually increase errors. So we can have the systems where it's a, a, the ordering systems that, and again, they have another name here, CPOE, Computerized Physician Order Entry. Uh, these systems credited with lowering medication errors by up to 81%. Um, and, you know, they can flag harmful drug interactions, eliminate mistakes due to illegible handwriting. We've said this and reduce the likelihood of errors that stem from drugs with similar names. Fair enough. But it says here, but instead of preventing such mistakes, a new study finds that widely a widely used CPOE system actually fostered 22 types of medication error risks, some of them with disturbing frequency. And this was published in the, uh, the JAMA uh, in March that year. So what that is telling us, there are 20, they've identified 22 specific medication errors based on the design of the system. So although it was designed as uh, uh, carefully as possible, it still produced these errors when it went operational. And finally, and this is the bit I suppose that has come up or come to light most recently. And this would be the UK and US governments uh, spying on us, essentially, or uh, taking information from Google or Microsoft, wherever it is. Uh, my feeling is this has been going on for years and will continue to do so, and there's not much we can do about it. Um, but the uh, NSA and GCHQ in the United Kingdom are unlocking encryption used to protect emails, banking, and medical records. And it would appear that this has been going on for quite some time. And my feeling is here that patients are going to become increasingly wary of all forms of uh, electronic communication, but particularly where it records their health and healthcare provision. So that's been quite a long lecture. Thank you for your time. Uh, and don't forget to watch those two other videos and to read that one section in the PDF. Thank you.